Well, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates, and I am joined this week by my co-host, Dennis Pallette. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for joining us. No problem. Joining me for this incredible episode. Did I have an option? You, uh, I'm just kidding. I love you it. always, I love you I always here. have I love it here. I love it. You here. always have That's a great way to start a podcast. <laughs> I love it. Well, welcome to the podcast. As you remember, this podcast exists because we believe words matter, and we believe that healthy communication is oxygen for your relationships and leadership. And so whether you communicate with one or the team from a stage or from a screen, we hope that time you spend listening to this podcast encourages you, inspires you, and really challenges you to choose healthy communication. Because when you do, your world will be better. Your every single day. And it will drastically improve your relationships and your leadership. Well, today we are diving into week two of this three-week series called The Speaking Pathway. And what we wanted to provide was a guide, was some directions, some steps for uh, any individual who speaks either regularly or, you know, infrequently. Uh to become a better communicator, to be able to go, okay, hey, I want to communicate in a clear, captivating, effective way. And so that's why we are doing this three-week series. Okay. The pathway. The pathway. It is like the pathway to the Holy Grail. Okay. Right. It's like the yellow brick road. Like the yellow brick road. It is not too bad at all. Well, last week we dove in. Is there a song? I wish there was a we song. We should make a song. We should make a song. Next time. We'll have it ready. It'll be called <laughs> the public speaking <laughs> pathway. No, we won't. Well, last week we dove into this this kind of concept and idea. Uh, am I someone who communicates with people or at people? And we actually dove into what we like to call the quiz, where you can kind of figure out: okay, am I am I someone who regularly speaks, communicates, presents with people, or do I do that at people? And we only went through four or five of them, but there's a it's a pretty robust, pretty good word. That is a good word. Robust quiz. That will, you know, help you figure out. And you can find that on the yeah. website, right? Absolutely. You can actually go to speakwithpeople.com slash pathway where you can actually download the pathway. It's a free resource for you and it can help you do that. So so we kind of dove into what that looks like and we just kind of said, hey, there are some steps. Uh, doesn't happen overnight to become a more effective, empathetic, captivating communicator, but there are some steps to take. And if you continually do and you keep doing these. Over time, you're going to become a communicator where people lean in when you when you speak. All right. This, kind of this is this, the pathway. This is the pathway. How many steps are there? So to, there's eight steps total. Today, we are going to do four of those steps. Okay. Four of those steps. First step, step number one, assess and prioritize your health. Why are we talking about your health when it comes to public speaking? I mean, give me a break. That's a good question. Maybe you got to look good. When you're speaking, <laughs> is that what it's about? I, I don't think so. Oh, partially though, maybe. I don't know. I mean, probably you probably yeah, you feel is. better when you, you look better. Feel so much better. Well, the goal for this step is to approach every day with discipline, uh, in the key healthy focus areas. So areas like your emotional health, physical health, your mental health, your financial, and your spiritual health. Mm. And so when you approach every day, giving those areas time putting into place habits that will help continue that growth pattern in the long run, your communication will grow. So is it hard for you to prioritize your health? Very much so. For years it has been. I feel like this season of life, I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure that I'm prioritizing it. But for years, I, I think I did horrible. I worked so many hours. I didn't take care of myself. I ate whatever I wanted to drink whatever I wanted to not not that kind of drink yeah 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 but like the sugar drinks you know to where it, it just those kind of things wore me down and I learned something valuable from my grandma uh, <laughs> garbage in garbage out garbage out yeah garbage out. so if I'm letting a stream of garbage in garbage out so if I'm not taking care of myself I'm eating bad food I'm you know it's it's gonna be an overflow of your communication right yeah, it's hard. It's hard, though. It's hard for me, at least, to prioritize health whenever there's so many good options for bad things. Like, so many I mean, good ice options. cream and all that stuff. It's just like, oh, but I want, you know, like we just ate Wendy's. I would rather have the Wendy's burger than the Wendy's salad. But we chose healthy. We chose healthy. We chose to prioritize we chose healthy. Health. So in this step, 
One of the things we do is you walk through the pathway. So if you ever do coaching with us, we would actually take you through this. We would help you go through some health assessments to kind of figure out where am I at emotionally? You know, am I, am I an emotionally healthy person? Am I mentally healthy? Am I physically healthy? And so we would kind of walk through some of those uh, assessments and those tests, you know, to be able to give you some, you know, actual, but for the most part, I think, I think most of us know where we're at, especially the physical one. We're like, okay, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really know if I'm going to do it so well, right. You know, that way. So that's one of the things that we, you know, is so important in this process. And then it's making sure that we're putting into place some of these healthy habits. So we're making our health a priority every single day. So for you, Dennis, what are some of those healthy habits across those five, you know, different health areas that are helpful for you? Yeah. I would say, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit about this before, but you know, that, that book Atomic Habits has helped me a lot because I realized that it doesn't have to be a huge habit. It can just be something small. And so something small could just simply be, and I was thinking about this the other day, I've started going back to the gym. All right. I know. And the, the main habit that I have to make sure that I have is that I get in my car because I have to drive to the gym. So yep. like I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, you put your workout clothes next to your bed so when you wake up you put your running shoes on yeah like i, I don't do that but i right. know that if i get in the in the car i'm gonna go to the gym so that you know that kind of stuff or even like the whole putting your phone somewhere far away so you're not checking it constantly while you're trying to get your eight hours of sleep right you know maybe that's where you have to put the phone in another room maybe that's one of those habits where hey it's time for bed it's whatever time it is that i'm going to bed and my phone is going to be somewhere far away so that I can actually start to get into that mode of sleep. Now, that's a tough habit, I will just say. I mean, how many of us are so addicted to our phones? Oh, yeah. That that's, I mean, it's so easy to wake up, start just scrolling through. Yep, yep, yep. And I just, you know, reels have just basically ruined my life because <laughs> it's just like, oh, I got five minutes to sit. All right, well, I'm just going to watch these reels. Yeah. I love what you were telling Research. me. I was, yeah, exactly. I love what you were telling me about your son. You know, he has kind of a habit when it comes to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I Where he that. won't, he, he told me the other day, he's like, hey, dad, I don't necessarily do, because we do Wordle. So it's funny. I wake up in the morning and I'll sit and drink my coffee and I'll do the Wordle. Do you know what Wordle is? I have no idea what Wordle, Wordle is. Wordle is such a, a fun it's word. A, it's a word game. And you, okay. and you basically, you got to guess what word it is. I didn't know if it was like a disease. No, 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 no. Or, so so there's all you got Wordle. So play this game. And, and if you watch, if, you, if you're listening to this and you play Wordle, you know what Wordle is. If you don't, look it up. It's fun. <laughs> you're, you're, it's just you're like fun to say. Thinking you got but, like a sickness. So we'll do it. But I'll send it to him in the morning while I'm drinking my coffee. And he's not awake yet because he's a senior in high school. So right. he doesn't have to wake up early. And uh, he's like, Dad, I'm not doing it right now because I don't actually check my phone until I come downstairs from waking up, getting ready, and getting dressed. He's trying to make that a habit, right. which, you know, if I could have a couple of hours of no phone and no fires to put out in the morning, that would be a pretty good, you know, habit to have. I would think. think. Yeah. I fall into a bad habit at my desk uh, up in my bedroom. You know, I have a screen in front of me, and then I have a screen to the side and a screen to the side. And then I have a little stand where I put my iPhone. So I'm like working and in the corner of my eye, my iPhone goes off. Well, what happens? You know, I'm, I go right to it. I'm like, it's just such a bad placement. Yeah. Strike. Because all those fires yeah. that just happen. Well, that's an, I mean, that's a great learning. For or me. like if you're reading, like for a while there, that's why I had to like get away from reading digital and I would only do yeah. physical because- Every time I would read a digital book or try to have, a, you know, read the Bible digitally, I would be getting all of these notifications. And I'm like, I don't want to answer that right now. But yeah. every notification feels like it's an emergency. Right. At least in my in my right. mind. Like, I'm always like, well, if somebody's texting me, that means that they want me to respond. So I can't get away from that. So I think mentally, physically, you know, you've got to have these little habits to kind of prioritize your health, to prioritize your rest, to prioritize the space in your brain that is like, you know, me not dealing with problems all the time. That's right. So that I can, I can be present with the people that I'm, that I'm with. So those are great. The things that we do. Those are great. For me, I think some of those habits are things like stretching, you know, that really kind of keeps me walking, drinking lots of water, you know, those are great ones. And I think even when it comes, you know, across like some of the emotional health, you know, looking at my life and going, okay, am I, 
am impatient all the time? Am I blowing up on my family <laughs> members? You know, those kind of things. It's all so incredibly important because just putting a couple of those in the practice, you know, and just building upon them, the compound interest will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And that health will come out in your communication. Yeah. You know, and people will sense that when they're listening to you. Like, oh, okay, they're they're talking from a healthy place. Right. It's just huge. Part of this other uh, assessing and prioritizing your health is making sure that you're actually valuing and putting rest into your calendar. And I know this is a crazy concept, especially in this day and age where so many of us, I mean, you and I, we we both are self-employed. We work wherever we want to. It, it's just, it's a, it's a nonstop. You know, I can remember working for larger organizations years ago and I finally got to the place where I was like, okay, when I left the office, I left the office. I don't, there's no office to leave now. Like I'm <laughs> always in the office, you know? And so figuring out where am I going to put this rest so I can unplug so I can cease doing something, letting my brain rest, you know, embracing life, you know, feasting on, you know, things that I love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a friend actually, his, his name was Micah and he used to always tell me, yeah, you know, the first thing that I do, we work together in an office. It was a little stressful. And, uh, you know, he would, he would say, yeah, the first thing I do whenever I come home is I, I, I tell my wife and my kids that I, I need like 15 minutes. Yeah. So like, just I'm just gonna leave everything at work, but I need 15 minutes, and then I will be 100% present. Like he just needed to yep. decompress from all of the stuff that yep. was going on in in life. And some people do that in their car before that, you yep. know. But the rest, I think there's a there's a rest. And I, you know, for a while I was thinking about that word salah. Mm. You know, salah, the word in the Psalms where it's like it's a it's a musical term, right? And it's where you actually you there's a rest before another beat. Of the music, right, that's good, and that's what makes the music more beautiful. So you you need that. You need a little bit of that pause, yeah, rest. Okay, now we can go back, yeah, and that's how you become stronger and better, and essentially more yeah, beautiful cool. with your life, yeah. So, wow, that's power. That's quotable. There you go. Yeah, that's tweetable oh, right yeah. there. I love that. <laughs> I think the last part of this is finding an accountability partner. You know, somebody that is actually going to hold you to some of the goals that you want to accomplish. That's why it's so much better to get a trainer, a coach, you know, some of those kind of things. Yep. Yeah. So step number one, uh, assess and prioritize your health. Step number two, you got to discover if you uh, present with people or at them. Like, are you a communicator who, you know, when you, when you speak to them, is it, I'm, I'm speaking with you or is it at, and we dove into a ton of this last week, but the goal for this step is to figure out which camp you fall in and then make sure you're doing everything you can to fall into the with camp. Because it's so much better to communicate with people than at them. That's why we say healthy communication is oxygen. Oxygen for your relationships. Because words, I mean, words are amazing, right? Like we speak words into somebody's life and the right tone, the the what the right word, the way we say it, we we just boosted their day up. But then the word, you know, a harsh tone, you know, angry. I mean, we we just dis a lot of, I think it's attitude too. Absolutely. You know, like it could. I think your attitude comes out in your tone. Yeah. Most of the time, like if you're mad or you're angry or you're like telling someone what to do. Yeah. So yeah, I just did it. You know, then that, then you get that kind of like attitude, and everybody's like, "Oh, here we go again." Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So. Uh, again, you can go to speakwithpeople.com slash pathway and get that quiz and go all through that. But a big part of this second step as well is figuring out what kind of communicator you are because we're not all wired in the same way. We're not all going to get up in front of people and communicate in the same way. And I don't want to like put people in boxes, but there, I, I have found there's four basic types of communicators, upfront public speaking type of communicators. So well, it'll be interesting to see which ones you and I are. Box number one, motivators. Motivators. Who is the first public speaker that comes to mind when you think of motivational public speaker? Mm, I was going to say like Tony Robbins or somebody like that. Tony Robbins, right? I mean, he is just the, he's got the Britney Spears mic on. <laughs> he's pumping people up. You can do it. Yeah. He's or like great. a coach, like a basketball like a coach. coach or... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they're able to, yeah, I mean, get their people's attention, take them on a journey, 
you know, yeah. keep them high. Point them. Mot- motivational number one. Uh, two, a teacher. So a teacher, I would say, is someone that is more uh, steady. They're going to dive into the content, the information. They're going to open up something that you never even knew could have been there or existed because they're going to they're going to teach their way through it. Who's a who's somebody that kind of oh, pops man. to your mind? Uh, I don't know. You got one. Oh, <clears throat> I was hoping you. Would I know. Have one. I can't think of a teacher. I mean, I can think of plenty of teachers that I've had. Oh, for sure. That you know that have done that kind of. Thing. I. I mean, I. I have some pastors that I know who are very sure teacher like, um, but most people won't know who they are. So no. Yeah. We're breaking the rules here, but. Uh, our, our, Do we have one? Our podcast who? friend from the side, Christy's Tell us. Okay. Okay. Priscilla Shire. Absolutely. There you go. She is someone who is a. A, uh, a teacher. Absolutely. Teacher, teacher. Love it. Okay. So motivator, teacher, a third one, storyteller. Jason Rates. Um, ah, thank you. Ah, Chess Bush. You the can't Chess forget Bush that story. story. You're right. You can't. You can't forget that story. Uh, who so, are some uh, big time storytellers that you think of? Ah, oh, man. I mean, I, I would think like movie makers are storytellers. Oh, for so, sure. Like, uh, Steven Spielberg, yeah. those kinds of guys. Like I've never heard them publicly speak, but yeah. those are the, you know, I don't know about public speakers. I think it's someone like Bob Goff. If you ever heard of Bob Goff, I mean, mm-hmm. lots of stories. Uh, but yeah, a storyteller is just, I mean, they're going to grab the heartstrings, right? They're going to grab your emotions. They're going to take you for a roller coaster. You're going to be laughing one minute. You're going to be crying the next minute. They're going to, you know, open up doors in the story. That I mean, like, comedians are a lot. Like that. Comedians. That's basically their whole deal. That is right? it. That is it. So, yeah. They're amazing at that. And then the fourth one I would say is a visionary. Okay. A vision. Who's a visionary then? You got an example because I don't. Uh, I think I think sometimes visionaries could fall into the, I mean, I think Walt Disney was a visionary. Steve type. Jobs. Steve Jobs. These are the kind of communicators who, you know, I'll never forget that Apple, you know, presentation where he pulled out that little... That little rectangle from his pocket. <laughs> he's like, it's an iPod and a phone. Oh, yeah. And yeah. everyone's like. Or even if you're older than that, you could go back to the original iPod. Right. Where he's like, 10,000 songs. And everyone's like. In your pocket. And he pulled what? it out. Like, yeah. That's a visionary. Yeah. You know, that kind of communicator. So step two, you know, figuring out how you're wired, how you're wired to communicate is just absolutely, you know, so huge. And that will help you be more authentic. Because sometimes what happens to communicators is. Uh, if they're not if they're not pursuing health in, in this pathway, uh, it becomes a lot about themselves. And so they hop on stage and they have a speaker's voice. This is the kind of voice that they only use on the stage. You know, it's like they're either a real high pitch tone or they're you know they're louder than they normally are. And, and it's just like, no, just talk to me like I'm a human being. You know, like you and I are talking mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And so it helps, like you know. Knowing these things helps rid yourself of the speaker's voice. It helps you, you know, stop being the hero of your own stories because, you know, you understand, wait a minute, you know, I'm, uh, I'm more the guide. I'm helping people. It, it helps you from rambling on and on and on and on. You know, these are, these are important parts. Yeah, I would say, though, that it's also important to realize that you can be more than one. Right, like you're not you like you said at the very beginning. You're not trying to box people in. Yep, we're not like, oh, you're only a storyteller and you can never be visionary, or yep. you're only visionary, you can never be motivational. Like, there's those kinds of. I feel like there's a little bit of overlap, and then there's a lot of times it's like depends on the situation. Absolutely, like not every situation is a storytelling moment. Right. Sometimes it's a you know we got to go get this thing. Yeah. And you know I'm not gonna tell the story about like, hey guys, you know when you're trying to motivate your team. Yep. You know, this is what we have to do today. These are the four things that we got to get done. And that brings us to the third step. Oh, see, that's a really good segment. I didn't mean to do that. No, but it was great. All right. It was like our (laughs) brains connected at a different level. Either that or you're just like, we got to move on. No. Keep going. The third (laughs) step is to deeply and genuinely care for your people. So if you know your audience and you know, you know, what level, because yeah, you're right. If I'm coming in, I'm doing a presentation on, you know, the psychological differences of Gen Z and whatever. Oh yeah. That's going to be a lot more teaching. I'm going to use data and points, and graphs that, yeah. you know, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and so the, you know, the third step of this pathway deeply and genuinely care for your audience. So the goal with this one 
is to be humble, be wisely transparent, deeply empathetic. Humble, transparent, empathetic. Humble, transparent, empathetic. That would be the absolutely huge part about this. So I think one of the the things that you can do as a communicator to deeply and genuinely care about your audience is to become the expert in your audience. And so, you know, how do you do this? Well, I mean, learn everything you can about the people that you are communicating to. Mm-hmm. What problems are they facing? What are the things that are holding them back? What are the things that, you know, they need some solutions to and get to know them. We, uh, we did a podcast, <clears throat> Uh, we recorded it today, but it won't it won't air for a couple of months. But with a great communicator who talked about, you know, uh, before he communicates at events, he walks around, learns names, asks questions, asks you know all those kind of things. E- even little steps like that are you know so important as you come in. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts or videos about making YouTube videos, and uh, that's one of the things that they're always saying. They're like. So if you can hook your people with something that makes them sit up and go, yeah, that's me. That's why you'll hear a whole bunch of like, you know, hey, are you looking to buy a, you know, right? are you in the market for a new whatever this is? Yep. Yeah, then, and then that's what, when when you know who you're actually talking to, then whenever they hear that in the first three seconds, they're like, heck yeah. That's me. That's me. That's me. I need that. I love that. I think another way you could deeply and genuinely care for them. I mean, it's so easy sometimes to manipulate people with our words, you know, to like grab them in or, or try to force our thoughts, you know, on them. Mm-hmm. But again, if we can continue, you know, putting their needs ahead of ours, thinking through how can I help them succeed? You know, I'm not doing this to help me succeed. How can I do that to help them succeed? Right. That's going to really, you know, show them that. Yeah. And it does come again from that attitude of I really do care. Not just like, I'm here to get my point across and, right. you know, like the reason that we even do these podcasts is because we do care, because we really do believe in the mission. We really do believe that words matter yep. and that healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships. So yeah, pay attention. Boom, you got it. But like, th- obviously, like that's what we're doing this for. It's not just, you know, yep. we really believe that whoever's listening to this, watching this, that they really can grow um, in their communication and in their relationships because of these things that we're talking about, the people we interview, all of that stuff. Otherwise, we would just be wasting our time. Absolutely. I think the last little part about this is, you know, when we do prov- when we do communicate with, with, you know, our folks, our audience, you know, try to try to provide as much great content. You know, the whole, the whole over-deliver, under-promise, you know, kind of idea. Leave them like, wow, filled up, you know, do whatever you can to right. train yourself out. That's the third. That's the third step on this pathway, deeply and generally care. And then the fourth step uh, is study and prepare. Study and prepare. You're welcome. That's it. (laughs) That's it. And and I thought, you know, you get out of school, you're done studying, but leadership, you know, it's a lifelong, it's a lifelong thing. Yeah. Yeah. Studying, preparing. Studying, preparing. I don't know who said it. Uh, Leaders are readers. Leaders are readers or leaders are listeners if you prefer to listen to audiobooks. Right. But it's, you know, so incredibly important. Someone said to me the other day, I can't believe you listen to the podcast so much. And I was like, I know I listen to a lot of podcasts, but it's free education. You know, it's free information. It's, it gives me a different perspective. And I know it's not for everyone, but for me, it's definitely, you know, really helpful because it helps me, especially as we're developing content, we're figuring out, we're communicating things. You know, I love, I love to see all different people's perspectives on things. So it kind of keeps me out of that. The goal in this step is really to become a ferocious. I went with it it on that word. A ferocious reader, a reader, a reader, studier, researcher, and writer. Right. That's a lot. That's a lot. But I think of like National Geographic video, lion attack in the water buffalo, ferocious, you know, kind of thing. Like go out and and get the information. Because I think a lot of people, a lot of communicators, a lot of leaders, they're like, I feel this way, so it's right. Okay, okay, that could be true, but who else feels that way? Is there any research to back it up? Is there anybody who've experienced something different? You know, go out and find that. It's never been easier. Never been easier. Do you know what I had to do in 1988 when I wrote a research paper? I had to go to the library. I had to go to this big giant rectangle with all these tiny little squares in it, and I had to pull it out, and then I had to pull out a card and with this decimal system 
where I had to then walk to an aisle of books and try to find this magic book. And I had to read it. And I had to take notes. And then I had to type a paper on a typewriter. Do you know how easy it is today to research? Google. Tell me, yeah. tell me what this is all about. You know, tell me the de- the best five books. You know, Chat GPT, Chat GPT. <laughs> you know, be a ferocious reader. So, uh, what are some of those helpful tools for this? Well, yeah, Google is a pretty helpful tool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Podcasts can be helpful. Podcasts, books. You- YouTube is. I mean, chalk. F- how many things have I fixed around my house because I typed in the YouTube? How do I fix this specific thing? And it took me to a video of this awesome guy. Who's just like, yeah, if you want to fix your oven, you got to take the regulator valve and you got to, <laughs> and never would I have been so able to, sounds like... yeah. <laughs> it is. I never would have been able to do that 20 years ago before, you know, some of this. That's technology. true. YouTube university is great. There are some, some of that. And then lastly, part of the step is you really got to keep all of your research, your writing, the quotes that you get, your notes kind of easily accessible and organized. And I don't mean to like, you know, be a Google product Hashtag you know, not sponsored. Not sponsored. But <laughs> I, go, I mean, Google for me, yeah, I use Google for everything. It starts with my phone because if I have an idea, uh, first of all, do you like that product placement though? Like that, that was great. The speak, speak with people, with people. Comes on. But I go to my phone and the first, you know, if I have an idea, the first app goes into Google Keep. And so I put my ideas on the Google Keep. I can tag them into a document or I can tag photos in here. And then from there, I have a Google Sheet with, you know, I mean, even how we organize this podcast, you know, it's broken into a Google sheet with quarters and then all the information. And then each episode has its own podcast doc, you know, that our whole team can, you know, access. Mm-hmm. I just think, okay, that's, you know, so incredibly important to be able to. But do. it doesn't have to be Google. It doesn't have to be Google. You can go to the dark side. You can get Microsoft or, or Apple products work too. Apple products as well. Yeah. Your Apple note. There's so many resources. It's so important. So in this three-week series, what we're trying to help you with is some practical steps to help you become a more effective, empathetic, captivating communicator. And so you're able to go to speakwithpeople.com slash pathway. You can download this document and it will give you what the pathway looks like. It also will give you a quiz, which is kind of fun. Here's said quiz. Ooh, a quiz. To kind of give you an idea of, am I someone who communicates with people or do I communicate at them? Do I present with them? Or do I present at them? And if you do this over time enough, if you keep going at it and keep making the changes, you're going to wake up one day and realize, wow, I've, I've, you're never going to arrive, but you're going to keep growing in your public speaking and your confidence will go up, everything. I was just reading a book last week on effective communication. Author said, employees studies show employees who regularly invest in their public speaking skills uh, sh- show so much more advancement over other employees in the same company and I know in other things not just their speaking sp- exactly yeah because that because even pursuing the public speaking skills even if it's not your thing even if it scares the living tar out of you you are going to be more confident you're going to be more prepared when you're called upon because you're diving into all of these skills on how to communicate. So we hope that this three-week series is helpful for you. Next week will be the third and final week, and we'll go through the final four, the final four whoa, uh, of uh, this pathway, and we just can't thank you enough. Dennis, thank you for your thoughts and co-hosting with me. Appreciate no problem. Well, thank you for joining us on today's podcast. Again, this podcast exists because we believe words matter and healthy communication is oxygen for your relationships and leadership. So we challenge you today. We hope that this helped you as you uh, pursue to communicate in healthy ways. Thanks again for visiting our website, speakpeople.com. Tons of resources. If you go to the resource page, you'll be able to find all of our podcasts, every single one that we've produced. You'll be able to find our blog, which has a leader, uh, an article that's published every single week on different communication tactics and ideas and skills. And just tons of other resources that are available to you. Thanks again for being a part of the podcast community. We look forward to next week's episode. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.